us think about our strategy. I'd now like to introduce Terry Stevens, also a former patient of Queensway Carlton Hospital. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to uh, fast forward this. <laughs> I only have five minutes. So anyway, <laughs> there I was in Watertown, USA with my wife and getting some speakers at Best Buy. And I got back into the car and suddenly I said to Tish, Tish, I can't drink this coffee. And I couldn't swallow. And I, I started to uh, mumble and stutter and, and uh, slur my words. So anyway, 90 minutes back to the Queensway Carlton Hospital. We got there, we got here, and um, the admitting nurse saw my uh, jaw off from one side, as in a wheelchair, and immediately got me to ER. And it was a fantastic service. And we were there for the night, slept for about an hour, and the uh, next night went to uh, ICU. And that was my home for the next six weeks. Uh, I had a tracheotomy, a feeding tube, all kinds of wires to check my vitals. And um, the service that I got there with the nurses was just spectacular. I couldn't get over it. I would uh, press my little nurse's button like two or three in the morning and she would say, hey, what's up, buddy? And they'd come and uh, uh, straighten your bed. And when you're in that situation, uh, your whole world is very small. And uh, to bring that back into order, to hoist it up, clean your, uh, put your sheets back together, make sure it's all nice and clean, uh, was meant everything to me. And the, uh, the nurses, uh, Bree and Lisa and Rose and uh, Kyoko and Zhu, <laughs> remember near the end of it, I started to remember names. Um, so there I was for six weeks in uh, ICU. And then uh, the Dr. Uh, Yang came in, Christine Yang, and said, I think you're ready to go to rehab. I thought, wow, this is a bonus. This is awesome. So I went to rehab, and there was a uh, young fellow there in uh, physio, and he would be, you know, you can do it, you can do it, you can do it. And so that really helped uh, get from the walking walker stage to a cane and then eventually walking. The original prognosis was that I may not be able to uh, breathe on my own, uh, eat on my own, or even speak or walk, possibly. So that was all delivered to my wife and, and her family. <laughs> so I had to uh, pass each test one by one. And also the uh, speech therapist, which helped so much, Angela. And uh, I took a fluoroscopy test to see if I could uh, uh, swallow. And I flunked the first two. And then finally I passed the last one. And she said, uh, you can eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner tomorrow. I almost fell over. And uh, so I wrote a poem called The First Supper. Um, also, also, the uh, sense of humor seemed to get me through it. And the nurse, nurses got that. It'd be like, Mr. Stevens, can you wiggle your toes? And I go, and now can you move your hands? I did, even more aggressively, I even threw a little box of Kleenex at her just to kind of show her that there's a spirit inside this whole contraption. And uh, when I went for my first walk, uh, 20 steps out, and 20 steps out with a walker. And uh, the nurses are applauding, fantastic, you know. I'm just grateful to, <laughs> to get back to my bed. Meanwhile, my uh, pants start falling down because I, I had lost 20 pounds. So, um, you know, I walk a few steps, you hike up my pants, and uh, a few more steps, hike them up. So I ended up writing another poem called Funny Bone. And uh, the last two lines are, now which bone is funny and which bone is not? My pants falling down before they are caught? <laughs> so uh, anyway, after that, I was uh, let, let out of here, so to speak. <laughs> I went home and uh, wrote a book called uh, Hope 
recovery and a new life. And uh, one of your people here, uh, Rene Chauvin, did a brilliant uh, forward to the book, as well as uh, my doctor, uh, Yang, she brought in the book, I'm a medical doctor. So anyway, it went from uh, the bed to the bike as the back cover, so. <laughs> Yeah. One, one, 30 seconds. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I come back here every year just to uh, pay respect and gratitude for all the nurses and the uh, doctor, Dr. Angar, and uh, everyone here. But um, the last time I came, which is April 2nd, uh, the nurse grabbed my hand and says, you've got, you've got to meet this man. Uh, I, what the hell's going on? So I went down the hallway in ICU, stood at the door, I couldn't go in because I didn't have a mask, and the man was uh, in the same state that I was when I was here. He had tracheotomy, feeding tube, the whole thing. And I said, um, I know you can't communicate other than with your eyes. You, you can't probably even write, but I can see from your face that your spirit is bigger than this whole hospital. And here came to his face. So, thank you. Well, thank you so much for that, Terry. I, I think um, Terry's really illustrated how how important each and every one of us is in the way we deliver our patient-centered care. Everybody that touched Terry was very important in his recovery. And congratulations for beating that prognosis. That sounded rather grim. So. Uh